Hello, uh, my fellow hunters. Uh, this is Rosa Shive, and this is another episode of Satoshi Treasure Hunters, and happy clue day! Yay! These clues are, you know, these keys are dropping much more rapidly than they have in the past. And this particular clue is a way, way, way different. Because this clue has a bounty attached to it. It's called the Zero Knowledge Key and has a bounty of $70,000 attached to it. So, let's get into this clue. Okay, so as you can see here, as far as the clue updates go, you know, the Earth Key, the Aesop, uh, not Aesop, but the Abon Key, still not found. Uh, business card key, the first art tour key, still out there. Uh, the cult keys, um, we won't know to the end of the month who's going to receive that key. And then the Nirvana key, which we uh, already did a clue day for, uh, that key, uh, we won't know who's going to be the winner of that key until sometime at the end of this week. So those are like time sensitive, if you will, uh, keys. Now you can still find the room key. Uh, there has been some questions of whether or not there's been a sabotage. Uh, you know, the time differential and getting somebody out to the location. Uh, there hasn't yet been a response back from the game makers if there has in fact been sabotage. But a few different groups have sent, you know, sent people out there and they haven't been able to ascertain it, the clue. So you have that going on. And then of course, uh, the global key. Uh, has been uh, found and uh, when I do the update there's there's a little bit of information on that as well uh, when I do the update about the Nirvana key and the global key and possibly this this key as well so we have a bunch of different types of keys out there we have you know a geolocation key we have kind of a you know a marketing key going on with a clue key uh, two you know seems to be pretty difficult cryptographic keys the earth key and the bone key and then of course there's a social network key which is the business card key and then there's the art tour key which i don't think that's going to be a key that's going to end up being solved so let's get into the zero knowledge key so the clue is don't be so snarky so three keys and an additional seventy thousand dollars will be awarded to the hunters to solve the puzzle so no, this key is going to be a key that's going to have multiple keys attached to it. Much like the hunter key was supposed to be that, but the, the two field agents weren't found, so those two keys went into the vault. I think they were going to, we should expect more keys similar to this, and it's something that many um, game players have been asking for is, you know, if this is supposed to be something that's going to take a year with the, the, the way or the rate that the clues were dropping, uh, you know, we had some people calculating five years, ten years. Even the game makers insist that it's going to be only one year. That some of these keys are going to have multiple keys attached to it. So, three keys and an additional $70,000 will be awarded to hunters who solve the puzzle. I think they added the additional part because they do have a mini hunt that's supposed to launch uh, next week in Taipei. And so people are wondering when it comes to these mini hunts, is that money being pulled from the, the prize pool? And the game makers have said, you know, multiple locations from the first one in the New York, which was $500, the Taipei one, which is $1,000, and this one is not being pulled from the prize pool. These are separate mini hunts that they're having, different prize money to kind of get people excited, kind of gaming the works, if you will, get people motivated and knowing that, you know, yes, the ultimate prize is, you know, a million dollars in BTC, but you can also win these different prizes, or in this case, uh, monetary value um, at this time. I wonder if eventually there'll be actually like physical prizes or some kind of object that an individual can win that could play a part in the game besides just a key, or if you will. You know, you know, if you look at the business cards that they have shown, they look fantastic. I mean, that's an object I personally would like to have just uh, for my personal collection, if you will. But, you know, stuff, stuff like that, like there's a physical item that, yes, it will eventually, you know, when you get all 18 cards, I believe is the, the number, uh, you'll be able to unlock a key, you know, that's, you know, that's, you know, it's, it's still a physical commodity that you could probably keep on hand and it's pretty neat and beautiful display it as an artwork, if you will. So, <clears throat> let's get into this puzzle, if you will. Okay. So I had 
so many thoughts when I saw this clip. First, very blue. But before I go kind of looking at this clue for you, uh, I do want to say that I did scan the QR code and it links to this site. It's called coinlist.io, build Coda. It's Coda and Decrypt the Snark Challenge, a global competition to speed up the Snark provider. I'll talk a little bit about Snarks. So ever since pretty much when Zcash was announced, um, it's among them a bunch of different things that were kind of permeating within the Bitcoin community, you know, from Taproot to Lightning Network, uh, when Mimblewimble drop, uh, zero proof knowledge has been something that's been kind of talked about within the Bitcoin community and the cryptocurrency in general, uh, as far as implementing it within the blockchain or implement it in some fashion to enhance different cryptocurrency projects. And I've been personally trying to understand it for years now. I I get the baseline understanding, but when it comes to actually like the cryptographic or the maths, if you will, it's for me. So I will try to simplify explaining snarks um, the best I can. But for now, this is what the challenge is. This is what the QR code leads you to. And I will have a link in the show notes to, I think, uh, you know, the Wikipedia and to the best descriptors, you know, I have read when it comes to, um, and it's been pretty consistent. I mean, that's why they're in the, the top of the Google feed of what a ZK Snarks is. So you have that. And then you have like the length. So let's kind of, so you have the length here, 509046 timestamp. Uh, 2019 03 100 so is January March March 1st 2019 is when this was done time was uh, I guess you could say midnight 46 I'm not sure what this is so I'm assuming that this is perhaps the price is in Zcash Maybe 0 0.05500Z. I'm not positive of what that is. I was trying to figure out. I could not. Um, <clears throat> so you have the CODA protocol kind of like just like a void watermark in here. You have these little boxes. You have this right here that was just really super crazy. I'm going to enhance it a little bit. Enhance. Enhance, enhance, enhance. Oh, come on. It's not bad. Enhance, 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 enhance. I'm sure this is not what it is, but it kind of reminded me of floor plans or like when you are playing like some of the old school, uh, old school video games when they were first coming out and making maps, you had the line and they showed you the overall map and you had like these additional spaces, if you will. So you had to come down like normally it's like this like really straight path and then a couple breakaways. That's what this reminds me of. I'm sure that's not what that is at all. <laughs> And then you have these numbers, and I don't know why. I think it has to do with uh, fractions, um, but it kind of reminded me of biology and even chemistry to some extent, where you're doing like linkages for protons and neutrons for chemistry, making the chemical reaction or charting out an atom. I think that's what it was. And biology just. I don't know, it, it kind of reminds me of DNA chains, if you will, but instead of uh, letters, you have numbers. Then I was also thinking of that uh, ASIC uh, thing that goes around Twitter where you have like the hands go like this, or you have the guy and it has like the little box 
there was a smiley face that that imaging came popped up in my head this swirl so we're gonna have to unenhance you never hear that you always hear enhance but never unenhance so this swirl I don't know, remind me of the ocean and stuff like that. Labs established 2018, San Francisco, California, 01. I kind of tried to look that up, wasn't really finding much of anything consistent. Stay hash, QBT, so you have the numbers here. It looks like you have another QR code here. You have the ZK Snark, which I'm assuming is yeah, it's the key and possible address here. <coughs> And then you have the, the geo shape here. And uh, it reminded me of this toy that I had as a child where it was like this pin thing and you um, could make these geo shapes within, within the toy itself. It's a vague notion, but I, I distinctly recall making a bunch of these shapes like in the sixth and seventh grade with all these different colors. And then you have these, these very, like, dotted stuff going on back here that's either, like, um, art deco or microbes, like, kind of weird. But at the same time, it, it reminds, oh, oh, and the waves. This is a wave, like, ocean, but I also was thinking of audio waves. This could be a piece of an audio wave under, um like a spectrogram, if you will. But yeah, it, the, the dots kind of reminded me of that, and I tried Googling it. So if you know the answer, please tell me what the answer of this particular math problem. But I recall, all as a child, you would have to go up to the board, you had to put a dot. Then the next student would come up to the board and put a dot. And then another student would put it on the dot. And you kept putting these dots on the on the on the whiteboard with the marker, with a nice <laughs> smelly marker, and you just dots, dots, and everyone in the class was, had to put these dots, and then the teacher made us do it again. And we just kept putting these dots and dots, and then the teacher would put these dots. And we did that for like I think about like five five minutes, nothing longer than that, because we were you know, kids, if you go any longer than that, then it's it's an epic fail, if you will. And then there are some kids just, you know, when they're going, like, the second or third time, uh, wasn't a very big class. I think there was, like, maybe 22 of us. Uh, they started just going all over the whiteboard. Just like, yeah, anywhere in the whiteboard. And people were just going up and down and trying to make a shape. And then the math teacher's like, okay, so we have all these random dots. But what if I tell you this is not randomness? That eventually, no matter what you do, how you place the dots, you're going to get this shape. And it was like this triangle of like dots at the top and then a space and then dots on the bottom. And this is the math equation that verifies that no matter what the randomness is with the dots, you're going to get this shape. And I, for the life of me, I, I honestly cannot... remember what the equation is. I just remember the activity of going and placing the dot and the dot and the next dot and just watching everyone put dots on and it was just a kind of fun easy thing and then having to learn a new equation. As you can tell math was not my strong suit. So you have this and it, this shape also kind of reminds me of a snake as well. So this is the puzzle. This is the puzzle that if people can solve, you can earn $70,000. And I'm assuming possibly Zcash or Bitcoin. I'm assuming it's Bitcoin because it's a very kind of heavily Bitcoin centric community. And I think a couple things are going to happen. One, I think this puzzle is going to be very challenging. Two, some of the community are just not going to be a participate at the level that's necessary to solve it. But three, it'd be interesting to see how the clans handle this because this is the first prize really where there's a large amount of money and how they're going to divvy up, you know, the funds of the contributions that people have. And it'll be interesting to see how they handle that, how they make it equitable and fair, uh, 
what they expect for the level of contribution for the particular prize for the particular solution and it, i think it will be a marker of just how the nature of the particular clan how it gels will be i think a bit of an indicator of how the million dollar prize could easily be distributed um, give a man a mask and he shows you your true nature i guess put a pile of money on the table and you'll see the true nature of a person i guess um so it'll be interesting to see how these how the different public clans which you can see the communication how the the unofficial telegram where you have just different random people from different clans uh, unaffiliated affiliated all over the place uh talk about the prize pool and the prize money and the distribution and the solutions um <clears throat> And then again, you have a you might have a private clan out there that solves it, and then we might find out they're not so private <laughs> when people get their feelings hurt, or whether legitimately or uh, not so legitimately don't receive the amount they think they should have received from the prize pool. So this is going to be a really, you know, an interesting social dynamic group thing going on here with this particular prize. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that this is early because I think it will shake out and either strengthen clans, strengthen connections, groups, and really f figure out like where people stand and where they are when it comes towards, you know, the end goal of the price. You're here for the fun of it, you're here for the laughs, you don't really care about the money, um, or you do care about the money, and this is how it should be distributed. These things being brought up with this amount. I don't think, you know, the mini prize, which was solved um, by somebody in New York for 500 or the Taipei prize with 1000 I don't think with $1,000, believe it or not, even though there's still a tremendous amount of money, especially globally, since this is a global um, <clears throat> game, and the price amount is in Bitcoin, and it could easily go up in value. I don't think that that, believe it or not, will cost too much in, fight, in fighting. But then again, I'm coming from a privilege of, of my economic status, but also, you know, from being in the States, that whole privilege in itself. Uh, the 70 grand, I, I do think that that is going to be interesting how that breaks down. We are going to talk about Z snarks and exactly what they are. And then, yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to give my best attempt at it. So ZK Snarks, I am going to <clears throat> read a descriptor and then give you the best EL5 descriptions I have found on the subject. Uh, and mind you, people have asked this question and in some of the questions when it's brought up weren't quite answered, but this is the best one, best two I've found explaining what ZK snarks are um, it's just one of those high concept things that it seems like magic but it's not magic it's just a very high level of math that you have to have spent some time studying cryptography and mathematics and just really thinking about the whole process of um, cryptography computing and mathematics in general in order really to fully understand it and that might explain the reason why there hasn't really been a very good simple explanation to give to the lay people because the people that do understand it are so highly specialized and they're able to s explain it in their specialized language but for them to distill it to a layman person they, they just they just have that there's a very big gap of knowledge for them to be able to do that so i'm going to do my best and I don't believe it's going to confuse people because I've explained this to a couple different people in the past. So, all right, let's get on to it. So this comes off of the Zcash website. There's a whole thing below. I'm just going to read the, the first four or five paragraphs here. So what are ZK Snarks? Um, Zcash is the first widespread application of ZK Snarks, a novel form of zero-knowledge cryptography. So the strong privacy guarantee of Zcash is derived from the fact that the shield transactions of Zcash can be fully encrypted on the blockchain and yet still be verified and valid under the net network consensus. So that's just about Zcash. So the acronym 
of ZK Snarks, yes, it's actually an acronym. It is Zero Knowledge Succinct Non-Interactive Argument of Knowledge. It refers to a proof of constructs which can, one, prove possession of certain information, i.e. a secret key, without revealing that information and without any action to, between the provider and the verifier. So it's a methodology of determining that a secret key exists without two other people really even conversating or communicating with one another to prove that a secret key exists. So there's that. <clears throat> And then this explanation from the Ethereum blog, blog is by uh, Kristen Reitzer is the possibility of these sarks are impressive. You can verify the correctness of computations without having to execute them, and you will not you will not even learn what are executed. It's just that it was done correctly. So it's basically like you know, trust me, it works. And then he goes down and kind of breaks down the mathematical process for the rest of that. So I'm going to, sh from there, I'm just going to jump into the ELL5 explanation. So <clears throat> this comes from the Reddit user uh, Kuhutak, and it goes like this. I tell you that I know how, how to turn lead into gold. I need you to invest in my scheme. Cool. There's lots of things made of lead. You can turn it into gold. Great. You don't trust me and you want to see the full details of the process. I don't trust you because if I show you, you can just do it yourself. You know, the whole uh, protection of, you know, intellectual property is all based on that concept. It would be nice if somehow, if you, I could somehow prove my scheme works without giving you any details. But for a real world process, it isn't possible. However, in some cases, it's possible to do this with mathematical process. Password hashes are a good example. I want a computer to be able to tell whether a password is correct, but I don't want to keep a list of passwords around. Security issues. If you go to um, Pond, which is like Pond My Email, or Have I Been Pond, it has a list of all the different emails and, and things out there, all the different hacks that happen, and all the information is out there. You have to change all your passwords and go from eight characters to 13 to 16 and make it random and special numbers. It, it can get really, and then you have last password, manager it can get it can be very hectic for some people the computer has to be able to know if the password is valid without knowing what the password is so this is important especially if you don't want for example Google to know your password but you just want to get into whatever service you're using because what happens if Google gets hacked so that's uh, you know a fail mechanism, if you will. That's a point of security vulnerability. So the trick is to take a mathematical fingerprint of the password, call it a hash, give that to the computer, and see if it matches the hash it has stored. A simple hash function might be divided by 97 and take the remainder. There are 97 possibilities, 0 through 96. And knowing one tells you almost nothing about the password, and there's only about 1% chance of a random guess being right. With the real hash functions, there's a, there are billions of trillions of possibility, making any like like a guess almost impossible. So by taking this hash function, it's basically saying this is a valid method. The computer checks to make sure it gets this information of being a valid method and says, yes, it is, without actually revealing the password. So they don't know the password. I haven't revealed the password. You do this specialized mathematical equation to verify the little tiny bit of information you did provide without actually revealing the full information and that is the, where the trust mechanism goes in yes that is done so the other one is down here called WR Sanders and I also have a link to this paper uh, the canonical explanation is this fine paper by Jean Lewis uh, Quisquarter it says, I make a claim, and you want proof that my claim is true. But I want to share the algorithm that I use to perform the operation or the data of the algorithm use. I need to prove I can satisfy the claim without coming, to, coming any closer to understanding how I do it. It's like a magic trick. I don't want you to know how I solved the woman in half. I just want you to see I solved a woman in half. So going back up to the above about the lead to gold, I just show you the gold. And you have to see the proof that the gold exists in trust of the fact that 
every time I'm providing gold, it is coming from lead because you have the gold. So obviously I'm not, I don't have a gold mine. It's not possible. But obviously I have enough lead to be using a specialized method to bring you gold. It's a very different scheme than most math proofs. It's very true uh, when it comes to ZK snarks. Most math proofs work by explaining the algorithm and showing that you, you, each step is doable. So, you know, 1 plus x equals 3. And then you go through the whole process of explaining x, what x is. And that's pretty much all the mathematical problems out, out there. Like, e equals emc squared. You're explaining what the algorithm is and, and the results are and why you're getting the results. ZK snarks, that's not it. It's a whole completely different beast that can literally melt your brain trying to understand it. So that's my best explanation. I'm pretty sure it's going to have something to do with the clue that was dropped. Uh, it's going to be fun and interesting to see the different methodologies are used to make the solution and what exactly uh, individuals need to do to order to solve this. I'm sure every component is being breaking down, broken down from the QR code to the different wavy lines, to the geo shapes, to this right here, and even the, the ZK snark here, which I'm, I'm thinking is probably the, the public address. Excuse me, sorry about that. So that's it. Um, happy Clue Day. Uh, this is very different. I'm liking the variety of different clues that are, are being dropped for the different keys. I like the increased frequency and the different nature of them. We're not waiting for solutions for another clue to drop. Uh, there's different clues out there for people to work on if this is not up their game. They can work on the geolocation from you know the India one to the room to working on the cult key, to try and still figure out the earth and the bone key, trying to get business cards, you know, using your social network, uh, to figuring out the art tour key and figuring out what was missed and um, if it's possible to even solve it. So that is it for this particular clue day. I am Hiroja Shine. This is Soshi's Treasure Hunters and on with the hunt.